Good evening to you all. Do you uh, can you hear me? That's the first Hello. question we may like to ask. Well, welcome to all of you for this first FIRA, International Forum for Agricultural Robotics. I would like to thank each and every one of you for uh, coming here in Toulouse. And um, I hope hundreds of you following on YouTube, despite a few technical hitches because of a Wi-Fi connection, but we hope that it's going to be solved. We were we, we had high expectations in terms of uh, turnout, and we are pleased with the number of people today here. So we'd like to thank you once again. We'd like to thank as well uh, all the partners who made possible for this evening to take place and also uh, tomorrow. So the cluster robotics place and a number of medias, Tred, Entred, Matness, and Agriculture and Nouvelle Technology. So the presentations uh, tonight will be taking place in two uh, periods. First of all, there will be a keynote by the co-founders of NIO Technology. They will present their point of view of robotics. And then they will also present the range of uh, products. Emring Bartis will be responsible for this presentation. Then there will be a second part to the evening with the opening of the FIRA, the International Forum of uh, Agricultural Robotics, during which we will have a number of uh, presentations by people from uh, the uh, industry. I think that you have the program in your hand. We will be uh, very privileged to uh, listen to Maët Lelane. Le, Le she is a coordinator for the uh, local authority in uh, Le Morbihan in Western France. Philippe Janot unfortunately cannot be here tonight night and he apologizes for not being uh, present here. However, we will present his slides and they will be available for download. So he would like to apologize and we apologize on his behalf. Then David Cullio is a res researcher at Sony S SHL. Uh, Timo Burner from Arcofent. Maurice Golker is an engineer, robotics uh, engineer at Bosch Deepfeld Robotics. Alain Martinet, development uh, manager at Precision Makers, and then Guillaume Suc from Groupama. The presentations will be mostly in French, but also some of them will be in English. We have decided to have this uh, double language in order for this uh, knowledge to be available to as many of you. This is something that lies close to our heart. So if you haven't done that yet, you can get a headset through which you will get simultaneous translation. There will be time for Q&A. So every two to three presentations, you will have an opportunity to directly talk with the speakers through the microphone. Now, we're going to uh, give the floor to the keynote of NIO Technology. This uh, keynote will be made by the co-founders Gaëtan Sevrac and Emeric Bortes. They're already here. Um, so the company, uh, for those of you who maybe do not know the company, the company of agricultural robotics was founded in 2011 in Toulouse. We have uh, uh, 21 uh, salaried members of staff and the headquarters are a few kilometers from here. So now I'm going to give the floor to Gaëtan Sevrac and the microphone as well. Thank you. Bonsoir à tous. Good evening to you all. Thank you very much for uh, joining us uh, in uh, big numbers here for this keynote here. First of all, we're going to present the keynote. This is our first keynote. And then later, we will uh, introduce the FIRA, the forum, which will continue tomorrow as well. So as Gwendolyn just said, if some of you uh, in need of translation have not taken the headsets, we still have the number of them available. 
So if you have a last minute change of a heart, then Roma here will be very pleased to give you a headset. Okay, that's fine. So it seems that everybody is, uh, everything is all set. So it was explained, we're going to switch from English to French, according to uh, who is making the presentation. And we're going to start with an introduction as to why the FIRA was organized and why we're delivering this keynote. So I'm going to ask a question to, Ga to Gaëtan. The ID, uh, we had the ID uh, for this event. I, uh, I remember, of course. <laughs> and, and we do not prepare this question. <laughs> no, I remember, uh, this is a true story. Uh, it was uh, the last spring, uh, we were in the train uh, coming back from uh, Germany. And uh, we were in Germany to visit a uh, um, partner. And uh, we just figured out that we felt and we still feel a huge, a huge interest from a lot of people for this field of robotics in agriculture. And uh, so as we felt uh, this huge interest, we also felt it would be very interesting uh, to connect all these people uh, around uh, this specific field of um, agriculture robotics. And, um, and we imagine, <laughs> at this moment, we imagine a huge event, uh, like a big show, like a Tesla or Apple keynote uh, with uh, <laughs> With a lot of uh, a lot of uh, huge announcements, like uh, we will uh, we will have uh, ten thousand of pre-order of our products or small things like this. <laughs> then we check the available budget, and uh, and we figure out that uh, yes, a classroom with uh, fifty people invited would not be so so bad for a first uh, edition. But when we sent the invitation, we had a lot, a lot of uh, interested people again. So today, uh, you are almost 200 people in the room, and uh, and most people even following us on uh, internet. So thank you very much for coming. <laughs> and uh, we do not just have uh, any kind of classroom. We are in the Purpin Engineer School, uh, which is one of the um, of the bigger uh, engineer school in agriculture in France. So this is very uh, important and uh, and uh, strategic for us to be here. Let's start the keynote. I uh, go back to French, uh, so you can check everything is uh, okay with your uh, translation device. Thank you, translation. <laughs> So now in French, so Nayo Technology is a, a company of uh, agricultural robotics and we are deeply convinced that robots will make it possible, will make it possible for farmers to produce quality food in in the uh, in insufficient amounts without any negative impact on the environment. To put things into perspective, I'm sure that you've seen that curve already. This is the evolution of world population over time. And you can see that in the last uh, hundreds of years, there, there have been a steep increase of population. Now, if you look at this curve, this is the decrease in the number of workforce in agriculture. This uh, information comes from an American study, but we have exactly the same trends in French. So more and more people to feed and less and less people walking to feed the world population. And despite that, we realize that the majority of people, the majority of us, can be fed every day. This is rather good news, but there are also side effects to that. Not everything is so rosy. There have been counterparts to produce in such amounts and at such yields and uh, the detrimental impacts have been on pollution, pollution on the, on the environment, on increase in uh, in the wasting of food, food being wasted, and also a deterioration in the quality of life of farmers. So uh, in parallel to this, quality of food has been decreased. So all this is not very nice to hear, and population wants this to change. Myself, yourself, everybody would like the situation to change. And we cannot blame the farmers. They also want things to go in the right direction. It's just that it's a job that is extremely 
extremely complex. When we ask their opinion to farmers about the situation, what they're telling us is that if they are supposed to do everything society would like them to do, hence reduce the use of fertilizers, increase the quality of food, increase the quantity of food, while having a globalized market in the process of growing and um, pressurize on price, then, you know, the, the job is just changing. They're not only driving tractors, they are also managers. They have to deal with marketing plan and they have to implement difficult technical solutions. And so most of the time what comes back when we talk with them is the lack of time. They do not have enough time to do in a given day all the important things that they'd like to do. And that is why we're here. Uh, so it, we try to contribute and help and go in the right direction. So today what we propose are we do robots. Why would you need weeding robots? Well, we've realized, and it, it came from the farmers, if you get to automatize that operation, that you do not need uh, uh, weed killers, you can improve their working conditions by improving the working conditions and making it less painstaking and reduce the time that is dedicated to weeding. This, in turn, increases the productivity and the yield of the farm and increase uh, and improve their working conditions. So this is a first step. Tomorrow, what we're aiming for is to try and create a connected farm, a complex ecosystem in which the farmer will be able to access robots. The robots through sensors will be able to collect data, and those data will be fed back to decision-making tools, and robots will work together. So farmers will be able to access the right decision at the right time and make the right decision and that and then do the right thing with the right robots, and the robots, of course, are bound to improve uh, with time. So they will operate in a complex ecosystem, but will be connected, interconnected, and more efficient. Just to give you the overview on a not connected system, just try and imagine working without internet for a day or a week. That is the sort of environment they're working in at the moment. So Gaetan talked extensively of uh, Naya's vision, uh, our vision for the future as well. My task now is to talk about today, what happens now, and what we're going to uh, go about this in order to reach that vision. As Gaetan said, we mostly work on agricultural robots. According to us, this is a first step to make that vision come true. So this key not today is not only as not as a sole objective to present our weeding robot that you can see here. It's on the picture. It's also displayed in the uh, in the hall. So we're not here to present ours. We're here to also present new products and new products. Uh, we have. Uh, not less than three products. Today, we are very happy, very proud to present you our entire range with four robots. So, Ols, Bob, Ted, and Dino. Those are, this is a family of robots which are aimed at being used in the farm. Uh, for grapes and uh, market green uh, market farming on bigger scale and smaller scale exploitations. We're going to start with us, our first robots. So this is the weeding robot for a smaller market uh, market uh, farms. Oz is the first robot that was marketed in the world for the specific uh, public, and Naya technology devised that robot. So you can see that robot did make it possible mechanically to weed. So it has tools, uh, uh, and it goes two to three centimeters in 
the ground and it cuts the roots. It's fully autonomous and it is guided with a camera and the laser at the front through which they can make decisions and you don't need any interaction with a human whatsoever. This uh, robot with sold uh, 70 in France and Europe. So most of them are in farms, but also in experimental settings. It is uh, possible to order them or ask for a demonstration directly from our internet website. So for all of you um, listening through uh, YouTube, I would like to invite you and go on our internet website to ask for a demonstration or order directly your robot online. So we also produce other robots, as I explained before. We have a whole range. For the same target, we've also decided to cover and to uh, answer another need, the one of the bigger surface um, automation. So this is Dino, and I'm going to start a video right now to introduce you to that uh, new addition to a family. Uh, here we go. Du coup, sans transition publicité. So, a bit of advertisement. <laughs> Doesn't hurt, does it? No. Dino is a new addition to our family. It's the first straddling robot which is marketed in the world. So, um, saying marketed, it means that it's already been sold out there. The four first prototypes that we developed were already ordered. One of them will be delivered in Denmark. This uh, robot, have you understood probably, was already marketed. It sold out uh, for 2016, but we're in the process of producing a new series. This series can, this series can be pre-ordered for, for a delivery in 2017. So we've presented the range for vegetable crops. So ours for smaller uh, crops, for smaller farms, and, uh, and Dino for industrial vegetables crops. Wine was a uh, wine growing in the wine yards uh, was uh, an opportunity for us for a long time. And uh, we've been thinking that Oz or Dino could be used in the vineyards. As a matter of fact, after a few experiments in the field with the Interprofessional Institute for the Champagne wine and a number of other partners, um, academic partners, we have decided to change strategies. And uh, um, caring for the needs of vineyards is now part of a complete strategy of uh, uh, NIO. So we're not going to make a distinction between smaller and bigger forms, but we're going to talk in terms of size of ranks. Those are vineyards in the Champagne region with uh, uh, smaller uh, ranks. And for that, we have created Bob. Bob makes it possible to read when you do not have so much spacing in between ranks. So the technologies are the, are the one that are embarked in our vegetable crop products, and it's, um, it, it has exactly the same uh, characteristics. We've produced four of them. And unfortunately, I regret, but I'm also deeply pleased to say that there's only one left. So for those of you who are interested, who would like to test that uh, device, well, I would like to invite you to uh, get in touch with our um, sales representatives or connect directly on our websites. 
Comme on a parlé de vignes larges, on so va parler de vignes larges. vignes avec des plus grands et des robots pour les vignes classiques vignes avec un straddling device. Son nom est Ted et nous allons découvrir ce robot sur Nvidia. TED est un robot électrique enjambeur développé spécifiquement pour la vigne par Nayo Technologies en partenariat avec The role of uh, this academic partner was to support NAO as a specialist in robotics in the special industry of vineyards. So we have defined the specifications, the environment, and the constraints that are specific to vineyards. First application is mechanical uh, weeding in the ground, and uh, the vine growers are deeply interested in using that uh, robot because it uh, makes it possible to save time. So after uh, weeding, we'll continue to propose other functions in order to uh, continue uh, the maintenance of uh, the uh, field of the vineyard and avoid using fertilizers. And it will also be used to uh, uh, spray fit and sanitary products. And you can see here the uh, demonstration of the spraying of the sanitary product. So Ted is a robot for um, vineyards with uh, a specific scope and will make it possible to do mechanical weeding. Generally speaking, all the robots that we've created aim at weeding, but all the robots that we've created will make it possible to be upgraded with other functions, other tools um, in order to, for, for instance, dig over or who or plow or maybe also uh, Uh, seed. And this will evolve with time. And those robots will also be a very good vehicle for data collection. And data collection is also part of a strategy. To, to conclude on this last uh, robot, this uh, product can be pre ordered on our website. There will be four manufactured in 2017. I think uh, that we have covered the range of our products. I would like to invite you at the end of the evening during our cocktail to uh, visit the exhibition space so that you can see the products uh, close up and uh, ask questions to people with a um, green shirt like Gaetan and myself and we'll be happy to provide you with more information. No. In order to produce and manufacture those robots and to be here today in the last five years, it's not always been very easy. And of course, uh, we uh, would like to uh, pay tribute to our team, our team which is dedicated every day and has been uh, with us every step of the way, highly dedicated. I would like to also thank our first customers and our customers uh, today. And they've gone through rough times, but they made it possible to develop our product, make, it, uh, make them more reliable. And uh, they also made it possible for us to develop new products. I would like to thank our partners as well, who made it possible to support Naya and believed in our prospects. So uh, from uh, the bottom of my heart, I would like to uh, pay a deep felt tribute. Now, I would like to uh, conclude uh, with uh, a very emotional clip for me. So that was uh, some five years ago. That was uh, a, uh, that was a chassis of a um, mowing device, and it didn't work very well, as you can see. So we've come a long way, and uh, well, there, there, there are many beautiful prospects for the future. Thank you very much. Voilà, j'imagine que ça peut. Right, so I suppose that there may be questions now, so we can uh, have a Q&A session now. So if you'd like to ask a question, then we're going to circulate a roaming microphone and we try to see you, although it's a bit dark. So there's a first question here in the room, the gentleman here. 
Good evening. Oh, the microphone's not on, which doesn't uh, really help, does it? It's going to be uh, working. The tech guy is coming. We're going to change mics, I think. Probably the safest option. Oui, voilà. On... So those robots uh, cost between 75 and 80,000 euros. No pictures, please. No pictures. So will, will it be sold within the framework of, of Cuma, for instance? Well, to answer your question, uh, for uh, small vegetable crops, there are very few uh, proposals for uh, CUMA. Uh, so they have not been sold for the time being as a shared ownership scheme, but I think that uh, it will be uh, developed for bigger vegetable crops. And it's probably interesting because uh, it helps you better make better use of, uh, of, the, of the machine. Um, so cooperative use of this machine. That's all bit, we've, we've been contacted by a company also would like to purchase a robot and then uh, lease that robot to farmers. There may be a, another question in the public. Oh, well, I'm just, I have a second question. So do, do, do you... Do you um, do a customer care as well and after sales? Well, we have distributors in France and uh, abroad as well, um, and they train to perform uh, after sale care and maintenance and repair. So the distributors are in charge of everything that has to do with after sales. Well, I know that you really are targeting weeding, but would you like to develop in the future precision treatment with phytosanitary products. Well, this is a topic in high demand with farmers in order to reduce the dosage of phytosanitary product to use less in a more targeted way. But it is not very easy to implement on smaller electrical robots. So there is a real need, but from a technical point of view, there's a lot of work ahead. We've uh, already made a test with uh, weeding uh, uh, with uh, weed killer, uh, but uh, we've ha we have a request for treating uh, the leaves of uh, of of wine of, of vineyard in vineyards. There's a, a demand as well, but again, there are many challenges that we have to face, and I think it's going to take some time before we can really market something. We're going to work in cooperation with the engineer school and the academic background in order to try and fit retrofit other tools on the. Uh, robot. Your turn to answer. Just to continue with your answer and the question that has been asked about the cost and capability, the systems already exist. The capability to uh, uh, to those phytosanitary products while the tractor is being uh, used in the field with systems like SMAG, for instance. So uh, for nitrogen uh, spray. Praying. Again, there are two reasons why it is uh, difficult. You need power to spray very small drops in the leaves. So you need power to create the uh, drop and also to create enough wind to have the right dissemination. And then the treatment volume, we're talking about 300, 400, 1,000 liters of product mixed with water by hand. And today, the electrical devices, the small lightweight devices, are not developed to carry the weight of 1,000 liters. So those are the technical limitations that we have at the moment. Are there other questions in the public? You've been working on making the robots uh, independent uh, by solar, uh, solar caption of energy. 
uh, we we've done the math uh, and technically it is not very uh, profitable for our solution because uh, the problem is the size of the robot uh, for our small robot if you cover it with a solar panel you will just get enough energy to increase the autonomy from 10 minutes each uh, four hours or something like that. So it makes the robot more expensive uh, and, and, and you do not have a lot of uh, uh, feedback on the in, in, uh, energy uh, autonomy because the solar panel uh, need a, a lot of surface. So for example, for the smaller of our robot, Hose, if you want to charge it in six to eight hours, you will need four square meters of solar panel in the good direction for the sun. So just have just having solar panel on the robot it is not uh, efficient enough in energy at the moment. Thank you. Oui. D'autres questions Ah on en a beaucoup. Oui, bonjour. Euh Kaliman, je viens d'Indonésie. Je voudrais savoir quel se Good uh, afternoon. I come from Indonesia. You talked about limitations in the load that can be carried by the robot. What would be the maximum load that they could carry today? This is a question for mechanics, but uh, I think without being mistaken, the smaller robot us can carry between 19 and 100 kilograms. The bigger robot, Ted or Dino, we haven't tried uh, formally to test how much it can carry, but I would say a few hundreds. Then the question is, where are you going to uh, uh, place the load? How it go is it going to be fixed? But if you'd like to have more details, then I would like to invite you and talk with our mechanics later after the presentations. Are there other questions in the room? There is a question on the internet that we're going to read out uh, to you. Or maybe we, we give priority to the questions in, in the public and then we'll read the questions that have been sent through the internet. You decided uh, to use a technology with cameras. Uh, we, there is also a technology named uh, GPS, uh, which uh, provides which has been uh, proven. So why did you choose a technology, a camera-based technology? Well, that's a very good question. We started uh, five years ago with cameras and lasers, and initially it was even only lasers, because a GPS technology for owner of a small farm would make the product too expensive, and so it was not possible to add GPS technology. And also we had a number of issues with um, GPS uh, signal reception, especially when uh, we had smaller farmers in, uh, in in region close to forests, for instance, where the signal coverage was not so good. Now, on uh, the bigger robots, uh, Dino or Ted, the uh, straddling uh, robots, we are in the process of working on GPS solutions like RTK, uh, which uh, you come across uh, in robotics, in agricultural robotics. And so this technology will be an add-on to the camera uh, technology that we use because those are not exclusive. It's possible that you lose uh, GPS signal and you may have farmers who do not want to use GPS signals. So cameras will be or will continue to be provided with lasers and GPS on the bigger robots. We have a question on Twitter apparently, but there is another question uh, in the public. Good uh, evening. I have two questions. Are you going to be interested in other types of culture, other than the vegetable crops and vineyards? And are you going to um, evolve your range? Are you going to create more robots with more functions? So to answer your first question, well, please come back next year uh, during our next uh, keynote. Yes, well, of course, we're going to uh, widen the range to other types of crops. I'm not an expert 
seeds, but uh, what uh, specialized crops. Again, I'm by no means a specialist, but I'm going to try and target other types of crops, not naturally, necessarily cereals, but other types of crops, more specialized. When it comes to the different type of robots, we do not want to be very um, general or to be too generic. So maybe we're going to develop a new robot, but what we're going to do is uh, develop the existing robots. So Nile is growing. We are hiring to have a bigger team in order to face the needs for new tools and robots. So we have a Twitter question. Uh, which uh, I'm going to uh, read uh, because you have the hashtag FIRA2016. It's an active hashtag. So, of course, you're invited. Sylvain Bringuet says hello. So, he's asking a question on TED. So, have you seen Ted? Uh, can we see Ted walking with a farmer? So, Ted, as it's been presented in my keynote, has uh, never been marketed. It's in the pre order phase. So, Ted has never worked with a farmer alone, but it worked with farmers around it. And, uh, in the setting, in an experimental setting. But it shouldn't be too long before it is implemented in real life forms. Right, for other questions, we'll have time after the next session to for, for next Q&A. Q so that was the keynote. Now we're going to uh, officially open the FIRA first edition of the Forum of Agricultural Robotics. So I'm going to give you a floor again to present the challenges that you have to face and that you would like to face with FIRA. Again, uh, to launch this such an event, FIRA, is the opportunity to bring together all, uh, all the people interested and working with the robots in agriculture. And not only, there is a lot of events in the world uh, based or focused on the research uh, area for robots in agriculture. And we wanted here to, yes, to, to give the opportunity to the people who want to uh, bring those robots to uh, real farmers and not only to scientists. Uh, so yes, make these people uh, meet here and have the opportunity to, uh, to create. This will happen mostly tomorrow, but maybe uh, tonight uh, around the, the cocktail. Uh, yeah, try to work together to make happen a community, yes, let's say community, or at least uh, some project we can start together to uh, deal with some issue uh, related to uh, agriculture and robots. Uh, for example, one issue is uh, what about the worker that the robot will replace? This is a question we often hear. And of course, we cannot answer this question only us, uh, NIO Technology. We have a lot of uh, technical answer and, 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 and thought about this question, but we cannot answer it. It's a very complex uh, question alone. So yes, let's take the opportunity. We are here together to create something and to start to, to build this community and to handle, to be proactive on such complex uh, question. And, uh, and of course, we want to do a second edition of this event next year. And we hope to do not uh, organize it alone. So all the people interested to organize this event with us uh, next uh, year are welcome to, to join the team. Thank you. Merci.